Also, we have a couple of more lectures coming up. Next Tuesday, the 14th, we're going to have, a, in the evening, we're going to have a workshop on better diabetes management and also um, blood sugar regulation. I'm going to give, it's with two, two other people who are going to be here, uh, Roseanne Ryder and a Christine and the young, I'm going to be doing the introduction and talking a little bit about some supplements and nutrients that can be helpful. And they're going to be talking about the mental attitude and lifestyle changes that can help with blood sugar. And then on Monday, December 4th, we're having Dr. K here, and he's going to be talking about bioidentical hormone therapy. So that's on those sheets. And you have a couple of samples, courtesy of boron, oscillococcinum, and they just came, cold calm has been a product that's been around for a long time in tablet and pellet form for children and adults. But little babies, little toddlers, and even newborns um, over three months get colds too. And I was down at Boron doing some recording with them, and they just launched this. It's in sterile water, unit dose. While you have the, the child in your hand, just squirt it in their mouth. It says on here, FDA says children six months and up. Um, in the rest of the world, they use this for two months and up. So I don't know why on this side of the Atlantic it's different. So it's labeled six months and up. My little baby that was up on there was three months old, had her first cold. When I was down there, I brought it home. We gave it to her. She's thriving. The cold got much better. And so adults can take this too. So you have a sample, so if you need it, and you don't have a little baby around, you can use it. <laughs> also, inside this and on the back of the oscillo, or inside the oscillo, there is a coupon, so make sure you don't throw out the package. And I gave you some literature on some of the stuff. I'd like to, um, in Natural Awakenings, we have, we're on the front page of Natural Awakenings, and we've had a positive change here. It started last spring. Yep, this is it. And you all know Diane and Steve. And Diane and Steve have finally, after decades of building to this point, they have sold the business. And they sold it to John and Andy. John has been working here for ever, um, for a while. And Andy, they've known each other since going way back to college days. And it's a great, it's a really, this is a real positive. Steve and Diane can start enjoying life. They're still here and stopping in and out. And John and Andy have the energy and the drive. you all seen we were here, we came to here, and now we're at a new beginning. We're just going to keep on going. So these guys will be around. Do you ever have anything, you know, any questions, feel free to ask them. Congratulations, yeah, guys. Congratulations. Yes, they're both pharmacists. They met in pharmacy. You meet in pharmacy school or before yeah. pharmacy school? Yeah, I know we're at a pharmacy. Okay. Oh. <laughs> and they're still talking, which is good. Okay, so tonight we're going to be talking about cold and flu prevention for the whole family. And we're coming into the season, and you really want to be careful. And out of this group of what, maybe 20 some odd people, right now, if I had a bad cold and I'm sneezing, or I had the flu and I atomized it, and we're all breathing it. Statistics show about a third of you will get very sick, a third of you will feel a little bit off, and a third of you, nothing will happen. And the main thing that separates us out is our lifestyle and how we take care of ourselves, our immune system function. It's good to get sick, not good to get sick. We should get sick once in a while, but nobody should be down and out for a week, even with the flu. And the whole idea is to get your body primed and ready, and so if you do start getting sick, your immune system can do its job. It should make you tired. You should have a runny nose. That's how we try to flush the virus out. And you should, maybe your diet will change. You're not that hungry. You get home and you want to crawl into bed. The body wants that. It wants you to shut down so 100% of your energy can go to fighting the bug. 
And what we what do we do? We drink more coffee and try to push through it. I have a lot I have to do. And this is probably due to my constitution. That bothered me. <laughs> Still crooked. Still crooked. Uh, this way. Um, I just want to mention this presentation and any associated materials are for educational purposes only. It's not intended to diagnose or treat. And this presentation has not been reviewed by the FDA. So that's the legal mumbo jumbo. Okay, so I have a couple of statistics, so I want to read them so I make sure I get them right. There are usually 62 million cases of the common cold each year, 20 million school days, and 22 million days of work are lost annually due to the common cold. Children have two to six colds a year, adults have one to three. Mm -hmm. Healthy adults may be able to infect others with the flu beginning day one before their symptoms. So for 24 hours before you even know you have something, you are infecting everyone you love. You may be able to pass the virus to someone before you even know you're sick. The flu seasons are unpredictable and it can be a good year or a real severe year. Over a period of 30 years between 1976 and 2006, Estimates of flu-associated deaths in the U.S. range from a low of about 3,000 to a high of about 49,000 people. 158 flu-associated pediatric deaths occurred in the 2012-13 to 13 season. So flu isn't something to play around with. But the other side is a lot of people get the flu shot. Uh, this isn't a lecture about you should get it or you shouldn't get it. But there's, even if you get the flu shot, and even if the vaccine is the right vaccine for the year, if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to get sick most likely. So there's a lot you can do, whether you get a flu shot or not, to stack the deck in your favor. And that's what I hope to get across today, some of the things you can do. So first off is washing your hands. And most people don't do it right. And then spread those germs everywhere. Focus on sneezing into your elbow, like this. And then you don't contaminate your hands. Turn on the water, wet your hands, apply a good amount of soap and lather up. And then focus on washing your hands for about 20 seconds, about the time it takes to sing happy birthday twice. Focus on washing the front of your hands, the back, in between the fingers, around the nails, and so on. And then rinse everything off. Use something to wipe your hands after that, preferably something disposable like a paper towel, and then use that to turn off the tap as well. If you get a chance, use that to also open the door to the bathroom as you leave. The best way to wash your hands is using running water and soap, but sometimes we don't have that available. Okay, here we go. All right. I won't make you watch that again. The main thing is, when you go in the bathroom and somebody else is there in the men's room, and I hate to admit it, I would say three quarters of the guys go to the bathroom and walk out the door. How about the people that you do have th you do have germs on your hands and you turn the faucet on, or the person before you did, it's germy, then you wash your hands, sing happy birthday twice, do it to yourself, because if you sing it out loud, people will think you're crazy, and then you turn the faucet off with your hands. Why wash your hands? And somebody said to me, but there's not a basket by the door, so you have to throw the paper towel by the sink and go over and either stand there and wait for someone to open the door or try to use your elbow. Um, one of our customers, a very prim and proper woman, said to me, you know what I do? If they don't have a trash can near the door, I bring my paper towel, I open the door, and I leave it on the floor. Right. And when they start seeing enough on the floor, they'll get the hint. Yeah, they so, do that. Yeah. So and I'm finding there's more and more, even in the restaurants, you're seeing two trash cans, one by the door. So washing your hands is important. Rinsing your hands for three seconds or just a little soap on the front does almost nothing. So spend the added minute, sing happy birthday, and wash your hands. What are some of the things we can do to help us? This goes year-round, not just cold and flu season. You want to eat well, get a good night's sleep, exercise, and enjoy life. Very, this is lifestyle. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. We have our adrenals, two little glands on our, above our kidneys. 
they have two major functions. There's fight or flight, you walk out of a cave, there's a lion there that wants you for breakfast. Severe stress, we're made for that, but for short bursts. He eats you or you kill him, stress is over, you go back to collecting berries. The other camp is feed and breed. You digest your food, you rebuild the body, you get a good night's sleep. When a good night's sleep is when we recharge the adrenals, we repair and we restore our health. So if you are stressed all the time and you're running all the time, you might be eating all the right food, but the body, the blood is going to the brain and the big muscles for fight or flight. It's not going to the digestive tract. So all that money you spent on good food, you're not getting the nutrients out of it that you should. You're also, if you're not getting a good night's sleep and getting into REM sleep, your immune system goes down. That's why they say, make sure you get a good night's sleep. That's what mom always said, or you'll get sick. Because if you're not sleeping, your immune response is down. So, did the good night's sleep. Good food, we've had talks about food and eating. I won't go into that. Eat healthy, eat real food, eat some raw food. Don't eat prepared food and fast food. You know, as a snack once in a while, you can have something. The body can deal with it. But if you're eating the junk all the time, it's like putting water in the gas tank of your car. The needle says full on the gas tank, on the gas gauge, but you're ruining your engine if you water down the fuel. You put the right octane fuel in so the engine runs. We need even better fuel than our cars, so don't eat watered down food. One of the more important things, or two of the even more important things, are ex regular exercise and enjoy life. You have to enjoy life. and. One of the doctors, when I went back to school, he was an old timer, and he was talking to all of us, and it was a bunch of, when I was a young guy, you know, I think it was in my 40s back then, and it's funny how that changes. 40 used to be old, now I'm 62, so 80 isn't even old. But he said, every day you need to exercise, I'll go for a walk, and in addition to that, you need to find at least 30 minutes to do something you enjoy. And the caveat is, and not feel guilty that you should be doing something else. And so I was thinking, he's old, he doesn't remember what it was like to be starting a business, have kids, a mortgage, a marriage, and all that. There just aren't enough hours working six, seven days a week. And luckily I didn't say anything. And a guy behind me raised his hand and he said, we just had our second set of twins in two and a half years. <laughs> and he said, my wife is home with the four kids. I'm working two jobs, seven days a week. I'm home about six hours a day, including sleep. What am I supposed to do? And he wound up, he took a piece of paper and he made believe he was, you know, flipping it and taking notes. He asked him a few questions and he said, I have the solution for you. You need at least an hour every day to do something. Uh -huh. And it really is true. If if you can't find 30 minutes out of 14 over 1,400 minutes in a day, whatever you're doing with your life, it isn't worth it. And you really should reevaluate what you're doing. And so enjoying life. And I found the hardest thing was not feeling guilty if I sat down to read a book or go do something outside, not saying, well, gee, I have a list this long. So the guilt can kill you too and lower your immune system. So enjoy life. Okay, we have a quiz. So first question, true or false? You're only contagious when you're not feeling well. You told us at the beginning that was false. You were paying attention, that's why it's there. Okay, the second one. <clears throat> True or false? Stress increases your risk of coming down with the flu. True. Okay, boy. Oh, fever should be controlled with either acetaminophen or ibuprofen to assure the comfort of the patient. That helps them get better. False. false. Why? Okay. There's many ways to control your fever. Uh, and you don't necessarily, it depends on how high your temperature is, or you have to be concerned too. Correct. And also, the body, when it's fighting, raises the temperature uh -huh. and when it hits around 101 102 that's when the immune system fully activates so your body you have a 99.9 .9, you have a headache you're achy you don't feel good you take your ibuprofen and then the temperature goes down and you feel better and you wind up being sick for a week or 10 days so you're better off 
Aristotle, way, way back, took people with high fever and put them in a boiling hot bathtub in one of the Roman baths and wound up breaking the fever. It raised the temperature and then it dropped. And a very interesting thing, what they used to do years ago, and it's making a comeback, you, either for yourself or with a child, if they have a fever, now not 104 or 105, then you get to the hospital or the doctor. But if they have a high fever, give them a bath, not a cold bath, we put them in ice water, a warm bath, and then lift them out and don't even dry them off. Put them in flannel, 100% cotton flannel pajamas, cotton socks, throw, place them in bed, <laughs> and two or three heavy blankets. And what happens is the body starts getting cold, and the mitochondria go crazy, and those are our furnaces, and they raise the body temperature up to 101, 102, trying to dry the clothes. And usually what happens is they're shivering, they warm up, they go to sleep, and you go in an hour later and feel their forehead and their temperature is better. Mm -hmm. Another way to do it is to get them in there, dry them off, put them in their pajamas, and you put some wet socks, cotton socks on them with wool socks over it. Same thing, the body will raise the heat to try to get the water to evaporate. <laughs> and, you know, it's hard to do, yeah. you, but it, it works because you're helping the body do what it's trying to do instead of forcing the temperature down. That doesn't mean if you have a child with 103, 104 fever or an adult with 101, 102, that you shouldn't be concerned. You should, and watch it, and if it keeps going up, you call the doctor. But the lower fevers, the lower temperatures, is the body's and the immune system trying to work. Difference between cold and flu. The, the main way I like to think of the difference, the flu, every joint in your body aches. You're very tired, you're very achy. Both of them can have runny nose, both of them can have headaches. You're usually more fatigued with the flu. Um, there's usually more sinus problems, uh, congestion with a cold. Temperature's higher with the flu. You might have a low-grade temperature with a cold. The flu, um, usually the sore, th well, I shouldn't say, usually more sore throats with colds than with the flu, it seems. But the main thing is the achiness. If you're fever and achy, odds are it's the flu or it's influenza. Okay, now, usually when I give talks, I talk about, I give information. Cold and flu is something you want to meet. You want to have things to do when you get home. So I have a whole bunch of different approaches of what you can do. So I'm going to be talking about different products because there's something <coughs> for everyone. If you want an herbal product, a homeopathic, a liquid, a tablet, a capsule, you want something to help boost your immune system, or you just want something for when you start coming down with cold <coughs> and flu. There's something for everyone, from kids, adults, pregnant women, newborn babies. So we'll be running through a bunch of things. One thing that's making a comeback is beta-glucan. It's, it's from brewer's yeast, um, baker's yeast, but it's not yeasty. It's an extract from it. And this works, and I have a little another little video, we'll see if it works, um, of how it works, but it works, this is for people who keep getting sick. You know, whenever somebody comes in the, the office with something, I always get it. Those people, it's one a day, one a day works great, three a day doesn't work any better, six a day doesn't work any better, every other day doesn't work. It's one a day, usually for a couple of months, and it works at boosting the deep immune system's response. And all it has is the beta-glucan in it. Once swallowed, Wellmune WGP is taken up into the body through specialized immune tissue in the small intestines. There, immune cells engulf Wellmune WGP and degrade it into smaller fragments that bind to neutrophils, which are the most abundant immune cell in the body. In fact, neutrophils account for 60 to 70 percent of all white blood cells. Primed with Wellmune WGP, neutrophils more effectively circulate throughout the body and kill foreign challenges. So basically, you can look at it that it feeds the neutrophils so they can work very, very efficiently. And the neutrophils are out there circulating, looking for the bad guys. 
the problem is most of us are run down, most of us our immune system isn't working optimally, mm -hmm. and so when a bacteria or a virus invade, it starts rep it invades, it gets into the cells, it starts replicating, and by the time the immune system says, I better deal with this, it's replicating so fast that the immune system can't catch up and you get sick. What the immune system's supposed to do is get ahead of the invading organism. You might feel run down or a little sick while the fight's going on, but the response is greater than the invader and you're all set. Most of us, due to poor diet, stress, lack of sleep, all these wonderful things that we have 100% control over, but we feel we have no control over, is what lowers our immune system. So that's the um, whole immune is very good. Now, they did a bunch of studies, and I can send you these if anybody wants them, but basically they did some studies on upper respiratory infections. It was a placebo, a double-blind placebo, placebo-controlled study, 12-week dosing of Wellmune, one a day, or a placebo, with 122 moderately stressed subjects. And it's sort of interesting, 90 of them were women no. and 32 were men. So does that mean men handle stress better no. or men are stressing the women more than women yes, stress them? That, that would be a whole other study. What they came out with for the results were by week 12, all the way out to week 12, there were less upper respiratory infections and symptoms in the people taking the well immune than the people who weren't. And these are people who are very stressed, which compromises your immune system, so it shows it brought it back up. They also did a study um, on, this was with soldiers, uh, fourth year medical students. And medical students are probably some of the most stressed out, poorly fed, lack of sleep people, and they're the ones who are handling all the <laughs> critical people coming in the hospital, so that's something I still don't understand. Oh, so they should build up a lot of immunity, right? Well, you, but if you get too run down, you get hammered. But they found that the students, the fourth year med students who, what do they work hours a week? Or days? Probably 80, I mean, their work hours are 80 a week, I'd say. Yeah, and it's all lumped together, and they had much better response and less problems. So it was shown both in stressed women and stressed medical students that it works. Another favorite, one of my favorite products, and I can pass it around because you look at the label, is Virusid. And what's really interesting, Virusid, or a lot of the cold, cough and cold products, people talk about how they use it and you're allowed to talk about how you use it, but the FDA says, uh-uh, that isn't real. You can't put it on the label. They have double labeling on this. They have a maintenance dose and a therapeutic dose. You can take two once a day as, a, I'll say maintenance, because we're not supposed to say prevention. We can't really prevent anything in the United States. You can just treat it. But as a maintenance dose, we have a lot of nurses, teachers, mothers, um, people who work in retail that are taking this two once a day helps you get the, keep the immune system on its toes. So hopefully you won't get sick. If you get sick or you feel you're coming down with something, you take two every hour for six hours and then after that two, three times a day. So if you didn't catch it right at the beginning, it's three times a day. What we found in the years we've been carrying this, the people who start coming down with something and take two every hour for six doses, usually the next day they say, maybe I wasn't getting a cold. You know, I can't believe I'm better. So this is very good. It can be taken with or without food. And it has some zinc, some um, uh, vitamin A is beta carotene, some vitamin C, and it has astragalus, elder, andrographis, echinacea, lysine, and acerola. So it's a real nice formula. So that's a good one. And I have the formula up there. So that helps with your immune system defending, it attacks the, or helps the body attack the invading organism, and it helps restore you back to balance.
Yes. How does that differ from uh, the baker's yeast that you talked about? Just the before? baker's the baker's yeast, the beta glucan works specifically on the neutrophils. It takes time and it helps them slowly get back to doing their job. These, some of the ingredients in here, actually are antibacterial, antiviral, and it has the zinc in there. Most of the viruses enter through the mucous membrane, and zinc helps coat the mucous membrane and slow that down. So I take this one, the virusid, starting around now through the winter. Luckily, I don't get sick that often. I don't take the whole meal. But people who are always getting sick or get sick often or never seem to get over anything in the winter, I add, I have them add in the whole meal also. Well, the whole immune is more long term. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Anyone, this used to be called viruses, and the FDA made them take the virus out of the name because you can't have any condition in a name. So now they call it enzyme defense. This one is another excellent product. This has been on the market longer than viruses. This one is all enzymes. Now, to oversimplify a little, we have our white blood cells circulating, and they're hunters. They're looking for the invading organisms. They attach to an invading bacteria or virus. They can identify the good guys from the bad guys. And then they're supposed to release some enzymes that eat holes in the membrane of the invading organism, and then it starts leaking and it dies. Our problem is Mother Nature originally and all of our food put in enough enzymes for us to digest that food plus some extra. And the extra armed the white blood cells. You know, they were gone in these bullets. Our food supply doesn't have enough enzymes in it. So we're using our own enzymes to help digest the food. And that's why a lot of us need to add digestive enzymes because we've used up a lot of our internal supply. So what's happening is a lot of the white blood cells are shooting blanks. They're doing their job, they attach to the invading organism, and there's nothing there to drill holes. So all this does is, it's the enzymes that help with digesting food, but also it's higher amounts of the enzymes that arm the white blood cells. So you're just rearming your blood cells. This one, the extra strength is one capsule a day is maintenance. And then if you're coming down with something one, three times a day. Because it's an enzyme, you have to take it on an empty stomach. You want it to get absorbed into the blood, not digest food. So it has to be at least a half hour before you eat or two hours after you eat. So people with low blood sugar or people that are grazing all day long, they find with this one it's a little hard because they say, I never have two hours where I haven't eaten anything. Um, I use, I alternate whatever we have at home. If I use this one, I take it at bedtime, and that gets me not grazing all night long. I stop eating at 7, 7.30. So this is a great one. Okay, nasal sprays. Everyone remember Afrin and Neosephrin and Dristan and all those? They worked. But what they did was they forced open the sinuses so you could breathe. The problem is the body, there was inflammation there. The body's trying to get blood flow in there to bring nutrients and white blood cells in to get to either kill the bacteria or virus or the mucus to help flush out whatever is bothering you. So you're artificially stopping that system. So um, what happens is when you use it, it constricts the blood vessels, everything opens up. When it starts wearing off, the blood starts flowing and you fill back up. And eventually you get hooked on it. The body needs that to be open. So Afrin, I think originally when it came off prescription, they said not to use it. They believe it was no more than six days. And people were using it for years. And that was great for our, I think it was sharing that came out with it. Because people, instead of using it for a week, they were using it year in and year out. It lasted 12 hours, and people were using it three and four times a day because it wasn't working. Problem was, you eventually damaged the blood vessels in your nose, and you never fixed the problem. So you really don't want to do that. What we're using now is, those are just about gone, but now we have things like Nasacort, which is a nasal steroid, and that 
shuts down the immune system and calms down inflammation. Very helpful. You can breathe again. You're not snoring, keeping your spouse up or your significant other. The problem is steroids lower the immune system response. So that's not good. Also, going way back when they first came on the market, in the U.S. we said it's local. You're putting it in your nose. There's no systemic absorption. And in Europe, after about a year, some of the studies were showing that they're detecting these steroids in the bloodstream. Low level, but it's there. So now we're finding in the United States it does cross the nasal membranes. So short term can be helpful. You don't want to be living on a nasal steroid. So what do you do if you're walking around like this and you can't breathe? There's a lot of things you can do. One of them is a real catchy name. The homeopathics, I love them until the FDA catches up to them. This one's called nasal spray. So at 2.30 in the morning, when you turn the hall closet light on and you look, you know this is to go in your nose. It's a normal saline solution and there's a bunch of remedies in there that help the body calm down the inflammation, help thin the mucus, because the body's trying to flush things out. If you can get these swollen membranes open and that thick mucus thin, you're gonna flush everything out and then you get better. Also, sinus infections, when the sinuses get clogged and there's multiple sets and they each drain into the one before them, when they're swollen and you have all this mucus in there, mucus is nutrient rich, so bacteria can grow. So you're feeding the bacteria and that's why a lot of people keep getting chronic sinus infections. One, they're using a nasal steroid, which lowers your immune system. Two, all, you're not doing anything about all the mucus, all the food that's there. And my mentor once said, if you have a garbage dump and you have rats, you can keep putting rat poison down, but if you clean up the garbage, you don't have any more rats. <laughs> so get rid of the food supply. This is safe to use from little kids, all the pregnant women, right through seniors. There's nothing in there to raise blood pressure, to affect glaucoma, the prostate. So very safe. Dose is a spray up to six times a day, and as things are draining, you start tapering it down. It's non-habit forming. If you keep using it and you don't need it, you're helping the economy, but it's not doing you any harm. And again, there's a bunch of homeopathic remedies in there, like a podium for cold with nasal congestion, sinuses, the pulsatilla is the um, thick yellow mucus, and it goes on and on. This is only part of what's available for cough and cold. So there's a million things out there. There's a lot of meat too. Every company makes a similar product. But there's a lot of really good things. There's a lot of things that you want to be careful for. It might be great for you and it might be awful for you. Um, so I think what I'll do now is I'll just run down. Does anyone use homeopathy for at all? Yeah. Homeopathy? Okay. How about for colds or flu or sinuses? Okay. And how did it work? We're good. Yeah. It's amazing what a placebo will do. Or, you know, the, the mainstream says there's nothing in there. There's no milligrams. Yeah, you're solo. And, but it does work. It's an energy medicine. And it's very effective. The main thing with the homeopathics is, it's not so much how much you take, it's how often you pulse the dose. So on acute things like colds, or even an injury, you slip and fall with arnica, you want to take it often. So if you look at the cold calm, the directions on here, adults and children three and older, at the onset of symptoms, two tablets under the tongue every 15 minutes for an hour, then two every two hours until your symptoms are better. Mm -hmm. So you don't take six at a time, it doesn't work any faster. It's you want to get the pulsing, the dose, one after another, you want to help the body. With homeopathy, what you really do is as you're feeling better, you let the medicine in your body work. If you stop moving forward or start sliding back, that's when you take the next dose. So some people will take a dose of cold calm and they'll be feeling better and it might be two doses that day or three doses. Other people need it every 15 minutes. Ocelococcinum is the number one flu remedy in the world and has been for years. And believe it or not, it's 
um, made from the liver of a duck. And the reason it's made from the liver of the duck, they never knew why originally, but lo and behold, in the off season, when it's not flu season, the virus lives in the duck liver. So, you know, Mother Nature, I don't know why, but she chose the duck. Ocelococcinum is a, you have a sample, the little vials, dump the vial under your tongue, let it dissolve, it's sweet, and every six hours. They did studies in, I think, five locations throughout the world over a few years in elementary schools. They had the parents sign releases, and when flu hit that school, they gave half the kids that were part of the study a placebo, and half the kids are solo. And in three or four different years, and on different continents, the kids who got the oscillo, their fever and achiness and symptoms were almost resolved in 48 hours. Everyone else was seven days. Then they did a study on adults, exact same breakdown. Mm. So it really does work. A lot of people will take a dose of oscillo when they travel before they get on a plane, or if they're gonna be in a hotel, they might take it once a day. It's not a label indication. The label is every six hours until you feel better. If you're taking it when you have the flu, it really does lessen the severity and the duration. If you even think you're getting the flu, take it because with, home, with these type of homeopathic medicines, worst case scenario, if it wound up being a false alarm, you wasted it. It doesn't do any harm. Okay. I'm sorry? I, I took that last yeah. time. Just, it works well. The main thing is sometimes at the beginning you don't know if it's going to turn into a cold or the flu until you get the fever and aches or not. If you are achy a little bit, there's no harm to take it. You can take them both if you need to. It's also sinusalia. You have literature on all these. This is great for the sinus congestion. It's not like pseudoephedrine. You don't need a license to buy it and sign a book because you can't turn it into a street drug um, like pseudoephedrine now. It doesn't stimulate you, so you don't have to worry about it keeping you up at night. It won't raise your blood pressure or affect the prostate. Very, very good at helping decrease the inflammation and get the mucus draining. Again, it's a dose six times a day, and then you taper it down as needed. You can go up and down. There's no long-term um, habit-forming um, effects to it. Anyone tried Chestol? Mm -hmm. Cough syrup. It's not good for the little kids because it does have honey in it. <coughs> Delicious. <laughs> and it helps coat. No, seriously. Not like fire cider, which is delicious. This is delicious, delicious. It's like a spoonful of honey. But it has some homeopathic remedies in there. It helps, uh, the remedies in there to help thin the mucus and mm -hmm. also calm down the irritation. So it doesn't say cough suppressant on it, and some people don't want to take it because they say, I need something to suppress my cough. And the way I explain it is, you're coughing for a reason. Either you're trying to bring something up, the mucus is too thick, or you've been coughing so much that everything is irritated, so just breathing or bending triggers the cough. Or you have, you feel that little like piece of skin, that little tickle in your throat. There are remedies, and it lists them on it, and talks about what each remedy does. But this helps soothe the irritated bronchial tissue, and it helps thin the mucus, which if you take away the reasons you have the cough, you didn't suppress the cough, but the cough's gone. It's labeled to take every four hours, but if you're hacking away, or the child's hacking away, you can go every 15 minutes to relief. And it's very good, and it tastes delicious. They just came out with a cold cough, they added a few cold remedies, so that's a new one. Now, to get a little closer, this one says Chestol, this one says Children's Chestol. There's tablets of cold calm, and there's tablets of children's cold calm, and the same with Sinusalia. If you look at what's in there and the amount, they're identical products. The only reason they put the children's out, one is to get shelf space in the store, but the main reason is parents are terrified to give the kids something unless it says children on it. So they have it labeled. So you can buy the children's, have it at home, 62-year-old can take it, and the baby, give it to the baby. 
and that way the parents will be happy because it says children on it. So do the same thing. Um, IgG Protect, very interesting product. It's made from colostrum, and a lot of people, 60%, 70% of our immune system response comes from the bowel, from the good bacteria, which I didn't talk about. We'll talk about probiotics in a minute. That's where I was supposed to start. <laughs> when someone has constipation or an inflamed bowel for any length of time, the, um, the innate immunity in the bowel gets disturbed. And they found by using IgG from colostrum, take it daily, for a while, it helps boost up the immune system response. If someone has good bowel habits and they don't have an inflamed bowel and they're not constipated and they don't have diarrhea and they're not inflamed down there, but they're always getting sick, adding this would do nothing because this is working fine. But if you've had a lot of bowel or intestinal problems, doing a month or two of this has been shown to boost your immune response. What's that one called? Pardon me? What's that one called? IgG Protect. That's good year round. Yeah. Yeah. Probiotics. I'm going to put you all on the spot. How many people take probiotics? I mean, regularly or regularly? How many people have never taken a probiotic? I just found a tea that says it's probiotic. Okay. I like to, there's two, two main theories with probiotics. One is that the more the better. And the other is, it's like overseeding your lawn. And I believe in the overseeding. Now, if you had C. diff and they gave you vancomycin and they sterilized your gut and killed everything, you want truckloads of probiotics. You want to get a good 200, 400 billion doses every, you know, once a day. You want to get a good bolus down there to reseed the new soil. But if you are just having a little bit of a problem or you've been on antibiotics, you need some. You just want to reseed and let them grow and be happy and multiply. So you don't need, make, I don't feel in the studies I go by, most people on a daily basis don't need mega, mega doses. And a lot of the companies now are pushing 50, 100, 200, 400, 600 billion a day. And how old are you? Oh yeah, you need 600 billion a day. Unless you have a diagnosed problem down here, you don't need 600 billion a day. So more isn't better. You're better off having a large number of different organisms, different grasses in there. You want the lactobacillus, you want the bifidobacterium, you want the soil-based organisms, you want some Saccharomyces boulardii, which is a yeast, but a beneficial yeast. It helps control the environment and the pH in the gut. It also attacks candida. So it's a beneficial yeast. There's all different ones. These two are refrigerated. Well, the two I have out here, these are refrigerated. They should be kept in the refrigerator. You can put a week's worth out if you make a pill tray and keep the balance in the refrigerator. This company and there's some others make a, they put them in suspended animation. But when they get into the normal environment, they start growing and living again. So this is the next best thing. If you're doing a lot of traveling, or there's no way you're going to remember to go to the refrigerator, excellent choice on this one. Alive is better. Nature made them live. So we should keep them happy. And they'll keep us hopefully happy and healthy. Um, for kids, you're not going to get a little kid to swallow a capsule of any of these. This is delicious tasting. The base um, is in a natural flavor and carrot juice base. And it has rose hips, propolis, some echinacea in there. And this again is labeled, it can be used when they're sick or it can be used if they're around a lot of kids in daycare or in school and everyone's getting sick, it can be used once a day for a while to help boost up the immune system. Adults could take this too, but cost-wise you're better off taking capsules. Um, just home immune. Um, what is the product? It's two ugly things um, for mucus. Um, Oh, Mucinex. Mucinex. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that a great commercial? You can visualize those blobs. Um, Mucinex, Mucinex is very good. It's guaifenesin, which is the active ingredient in robitussin, in a high, high dose. 
very good at thinning the mucus. If you can thin the mucus, it drains down, the body can bring it up, you don't get a, an infection, hopefully. The problem with high-dose guaifenesin is a lot of people get nauseous from it, so it can really upset the stomach. Mucostop is, again, if you look at the enzymes in here, these enzymes are what's in our food that nature gave us that help digest mucus in the stomach and in the respiratory system. So it's two, three times a day. Most people find within 24 hours, stuff is coughing up or running down. Again, not the downside, but it has to be an hour before or two hours after eating. So you have to plan the meals around, this around your meals, your meals around this. Very, very effective. Um, you don't want to use this if you're taking any sustained release medicine because these enzymes will dissolve the capsule and it'll give you immediate release. <laughs> or just take it a few hours away from it. Natural Creations has cough syrup, we know what that's for, and Tiny Tots cough syrup. The cough syrup is excellent, it's a homeopathic blend, and there's herbs in here. So it covers both sides of the equation. For little kids, we don't like giving herbs to little kids. Some of them you can, some you can, and the herbs have a taste, so they came out with just the homeopathic syrup. Adults can use tiny tots. Little kids shouldn't take cough, the cough syrup. They're both excellent. Again, a teaspoon every four hours, but if you're hacking away, you can take it every 15 minutes, and it really does work well. That's a more, this one is more expensive than chest all. It also has a lot more in it. So, does everyone need that? No. So the first time out of the gate, you know, you can't put a dollar amount on your health, but why buy a Cadillac if you don't need a Cadillac? So, I would say Chestol or B&T makes a good cough syrup. And start with that. If you're not getting the effect you need, then you go up to the second level. You can start with that one. It won't do any harm, but you're spending more money. There's a wonderful product, homeopathic, called Throat Calm. It's like cold calm. And in the middle of the night, you'll know that's for the throat, for the tickling throat, the sore throat. Is this, instead of you have a high fever, you've had a sore throat for a week getting worse, you can't even swallow food. Should you use this? No. You go to the doctor. At that point, you need someone to look down and swab it and see what's going on. But if you have a sore throat and you don't have a high fever, Sometimes this can take care of it. So, you know, we have to use our heads also. <laughs> There's also some people that don't want to put a tablet under their tongue. There's a wonderful throat spray. Very, very effective. This also, we have a lot of professional singers that use this because it's very good for an irritated throat or a strained throat. And then down this end, does anyone use any of the Urban Moonshine products? They have digestive bitters. They have... Um, Simmer down tonic, it, it's a blend of herbs, it's very, very common. There's joy tonic, which puts you in a good mood, and so the herbs in there are very, very good, but that one's 50% alcohol, so I want to lose the shot <laughs> and the good. herbs. But these two are great, there's immune tonic and immune zoom. Immune zoom, it says right underneath it, first response. So the directions on this is, if you feel you're coming down with something, like the virus said, you take a dose and you're taking it off and you're pulsing it off and at the first onset of symptoms. The immune tonic can be used if you're sick, if that's what you have in the house, that's better. This is more to help boost the immune system, a dose a day when you're around sick people. Um, the immune tonics, these two excellent products, kids can use them problem I find with younger kids is the taste, because it's very herbal. And the last thing you want is if a kid doesn't feel good and they're cranky and you give them something they can't stand the taste, they're not going to take anything from you at that point. So you're better off going with something that tastes good. Okay, that was quick, but mm -hmm. there's something for everyone. Tablet, capsule, with food, without food, as a preventative for treating things, and if you wind up on an antibiotic or on a prescription drug, on the homeopathic side, there's never been a drug interaction, so that's no problem. 
on the enzyme side, um, the only caution would be if you have a sustained release prescription drug you're taking. Otherwise, that works. We provide our staff this at no charge. And it's very interesting. We have, just like in life, there's two camps of people. Some people are bringing their lunch in and bringing good wholesome food and taking the um, enzyme defense every day or most days. And most likely, most of those people are using their um, sick days for vacation days. Then there's the people that are picking up, I won't name places, but mm -hmm. fast food for lunch, and they won't take it because it doesn't work. You know, they don't believe in it, which is fine, but they usually use up all their sick days and some of their vacation days as sick days. And so, you know, it's all, how do you know if you were taking something and you didn't get sick all winter, you wouldn't have gotten sick anyway. I figure I'd rather worry about that than get sick and say, God, I should have taken it. So, for cold and flu prevention, probiotics, lifestyle, sleep, good food, sipping water, um, echinacea, reishi mushroom, the virus, well, I should have changed that, the name is Enzyme Defense, Cold Calm, Oscillo, um, the babies, even the little, little guys, there's a lot you can do. And there were a lot of over-the-counter cough and cold for kids and infants that must be, what, 10 years now? They pulled them all off the market. We all grew up with them. And they found some of them that the dose wasn't high enough, it wasn't doing anything. And the others, they found the dose was way too high for little kids. But there were generations of us that were given it. Just They adjusted the dose. So in, instead of doing the clinical studies, because nobody would do that since you couldn't get a patent on it. They just pulled them all off the market. And 10 years ago, all the parents were saying, what do I give my kid? Mm. And there are some great choices. Um, tiny tots, these are some of the um, remedies that are in there. The stinging throat, the swollen glands, the raw throat, um, the scrape, you know, you have the scraping pain in the throat, the horse mucus in the throat, very painful swallowing. So it's really a good product for the kids. And it goes on and on with the different remedies. Um, before you get sick, best thing before you get sick, sleep, food, and wash your hands. You know, I think, good idea to take something. But again, it's sleep, food, and probiotic, and wash your hands. If you'll do that and not buy anything, I'm happy with that, because you're not going to get sick. And I prefer to be dealing with healthy people. And, you know, they're a great group of people. I don't want to just see people when they're sick. That means we didn't get the information out to you, right? But again, there's a plethora of things. Zinc, zinc lozenges, very, very good, but follow the directions. Too much zinc is very harmful to the body. So more isn't better. There are directions on there for a reason and you don't want to overdose on zinc. There's another one which we sold out of, which we have more coming in today, but it didn't show up. It's by Natural Creations, and it's called Cold and Flu Calm. And if you want to read through all the ingredients, it's an herbal blend, and it's great because it's a shotgun method. There's something in there for just about every symptom of cold and flu. Because a lot of times at night, you don't want to start thinking, is my sore throat, you know, on the left side, the right side? Does it feel better with something cold, something warm? Am I getting the flu? Am I getting a cold? Is the mucus thin? Is it thick? The cold and flu comp has something in there for everything. And the body will use what it needs, and what it doesn't need won't have a negative effect. So the main thing you want to think about is, I look, when you're going to buy a product, do I want one for maintenance, or do I want one to treat? Or do I want to get one that I can use both ways? And you have one bottle. What symptoms do you have if you are sick? When did it begin? What's the main complaint? And you were on any prescription medicine. That's the information we need to help you select the product correctly. You don't have to memorize this list. We'll ask you all these questions. Okay. <laughs> okay, especially if you don't feel good, you're going to have cotton in your brain and all that. But there's plenty to do for prevention, for treatment. Nobody has to really suffer. 
And if somebody is getting sick all the time and you don't have an immune system health issue, you're doing it, you're causing it yourself. And I think that was, that's it. How was that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you